Hey guys, it's Michelle with Kashal Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. Today I wanted to do a project share of my completed virtual retreat with Vicki Booten on her Bold and Bright collection. Um, if you are unfamiliar with Vicki Booten, I will drop a link to her YouTube channel so you can check her out. Uh, she does usually free content on Friday nights. Um, in regards to doing uh, layouts or, or tag books or stuff like that. Um, but when she releases her collections with American Crafts, she does do her product um, collection. I want to say it's a Lollapalooza weekend is what she references as. And it's a great community to be a part of. It is a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. Um, I am one I think that you would consider as an overachiever. <laughs> I like to try to get it all done in that weekend. So I am a late night crafter when it comes to that. Anyways, what I wanted to share with you was what we did in the class. So what you see in front of you is what she now considers um, her first warm up, which is usually Friday night um, for that start of the weekend. So it is Friday night, Saturday all day. And then Sunday, it's more of a relaxed, chill type of wind down. Um, so Friday night, we do clusters. Saturday, it's all day um, cutting, uh, assembling, and grouping things together for the actual album. And the album is a six by eight album. And then on Sunday, we do a 12 by 12 layout combination that, again, what I love so much about her classes is she is very thorough. She goes into detail. She gives you instructions for your cutting diagrams. She gives you um, directions or instructions on where to find things, how to assemble it, how to grab pieces. So I feel like if you're starting out or you're trying to figure out if this is really for you, one of her virtual retreats may feel overwhelming because of all the stuff we're going to do. But I feel it's as very detailed as possible in regards to some of the virtual retreats I've been taking. So it might be something you might be interested in. Um, I don't think the skill level for this type of retreat is required to be advanced. Um, I feel once you've done one, I think you you, you know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> but um, if you haven't done one, check out her Friday Night Lives just to see if it's really up your alley before you um, invest in um, her virtual retreats because she does give you all the collections. So I'm also going to share with you uh, what's left over in case that also is appealing as well so let's just get started and stop the chit chatting um so the clusters that she creates which i think are so creative and 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 inviting could also be page starters is what she refers to so what she means by that is the skill of this could be a page starter for six by eight for a 12 by 12 for any type of um, structure you want or you can back it on a tag um, she is using pieces from her collections and those can be an arraignment of SKUs. So from her goodie bag to her papery to her frames, you could definitely see we're utilizing a lot of different um, products in regards to clustering this option. Now, does that mean you have to buy everything? No, but this again is specific to her retreat, but this kind of gives you some inspiration as to going in your own craft room and figuring out what stuff you have lingering around that you can kind of piece together, or if you have leftover bits from other retreats, this is also a good technique to also figure out how to get rid of those <laughs> by clustering them. So as you can see, some things on the bag are used with um, just white leftover cardstock from my um, stash just to kind of give it some structure because this papery is very thin. Um, but just by masking it or not masking it, by um, supporting it on the back kind of gives a little bit of durability. So this was one of the clusters we did. Here is another one, again, super fun and interactive. Now, these pieces here are washi tape from her papery. Now, the reason why we did not remove the backing um, is because by doing that, it gives you more of a transparent look. And by keeping the backing on, but gluing it down with just regular adhesive, um, and I use glue, uh, liquid adhesive, um, gives you that, um, sticker look so you don't really see that it is actually a washi tape because i'm utilizing as a sticker or a thumb rub piece and then where we have some foam dots or foam uh stickers for the butterflies here is the opposite arrow 
and then again um, great little cluster it could be a standalone it could be on a card front I mean it's just so much fun this one's a little bit bigger so we definitely cut out some pieces from a cardstock and then we used again the foam stickers we mounted on a piece from the papery and then you could definitely see some stuff from the goodie bag here's out washi tape and then you just really just mash it all together here's another larger one so again we're we're piecing everything together we're adhering it and you can definitely see all the the stuff in the background now you do see that i have some foam dots here um and they are not sticky because i left the backing of the actual sticker there so that when i'm ready to utilize it i can remove it but it also helps me with the dimension as to how i wanted to overlap them or raise them up to match the um chipboard those are from the frame the stars are from the frames here is another one. And again, the same concept. I didn't really put a paper back here. I actually forgot. But if I wanted to make it a little bit stronger. And then the last one we did. So that was pretty much our Friday night. It was actually not that bad. It was like about two, two and a half hours maybe. Um, but again... If you're a fast crafter, you could probably be done super fast. If you're one that just looks at instructions, then you would probably be done really, really fast. <laughs> I'm one that I like to try to go ahead because I want to do other things while I'm doing this, but I've just taken so many classes with her that I kind of know her routine of stuff. So this here is the 6x8 album from her collection, Bold and Bright. So you can definitely see how chunky that is. And we actually make all of this well, let's stand corrected. This is what you will be making on Saturday, but you will not finish it all on Saturday. So giving you a disclaimer, this was not completed during her class hours. Why I say that is because I stayed up till four in the morning. Yes, four in the morning, no exaggeration, to complete it, but class ended at 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little nuts, but I really wanted to get it done. I really wanted to feel accomplished. Of course, I re felt it the next day because class started on Sunday, I believe, at 10 and I woke up at 9.30. So I had to get at least six hours in of sleep, but um, I felt really grateful that I was able to get it all done. So I will go through it quickly because I'm pretty sure you kind of get the gifs of it but there are some fun interactive um, elements in here but you can definitely see some of the things will have a, um, a, a mat for the photo so where i can place it when i do that kind of stuff i try to leave room so i can place the photo here so you won't find uh, adhesive behind these elements so that way it won't be an issue when i um find a picture to put in it and this is really a to me more of a you can really use this album for anything and so here on the left we have these little lifts of putting a little page a picture or a journaling spot here is her acetate for this collection and then on the back end again another perfect spot for a picture here we created a little tag, little cluster, and using just her cut aparts in here. But you could definitely add additional things if you wanted. Again, a portion here for photos. I'm not going to explain it all because I'm pretty sure by now you understand. There are some things I did different placements. This one, she had it upright, but I liked it when I went sideways. Again, if you took the class, you would, you would know that. But um, if not, just pointing it out. And then little things here. I really like how she creates interactive concepts that is not just a plain 6x8 paper. And then we have a, a, a bunch of different options for the fold and flaps. So you can definitely add more photos. I mean, I really feel like her books, you can really go anywhere from 70 photos to 100, depending on the size of them. Here is another little wider um, tag section where you can have pockets and stuff. And then you have your little flip and flaps, like a waterfall effect. Then we utilize some of the um, binding, uh, I forget what these are called, but 
you obviously see what they are. Um, this part was the funnest thing I've ever done. Um, so we did this in a prep class. We do have a prep class before the actual weekend event to do the hard stuff. Um, and I say hard stuff because you'll see in a second what I'm referring to. But we basically made this waterfall that just cascades. Um, and then you just pull it back down. So you definitely put pictures on each one as you go up and then again as you bring it back down it's a lot of fun <laughs> i really really liked it um but it is a little bit heavy on the page so you definitely have to have that support and then on the back you just have a small section for a photo and then again you just go through them and a lot of her pages one versus the other will have this type of interactive where again you just are figuring out what works for you and what you want to um, record in your life, whether it be uh, a vacation or a graduation or a birth announcement or your birthday or just cuss, right? Because it doesn't really matter. There doesn't have to be a reason to a uh, scrapbook or memory planning. So I really love all the flips. Now, if you saw one of my videos where I hauled one of those three ace um, punches is because I didn't have one of these in my stash because her stamp set for this collection had these little stamps that say lift, open, um, and so a three eighth hole punch will give you that offset of a white circle. So that's what we used for these classes, for this particular class. Um, and then I really love this one, how I had like an acetate sheet. Now, I wasn't supposed to cut. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to cut this in half, and I did. But this is where washi tape for the win. So if you can kind of see that there, I actually had to washi tape the two pieces because you can see I cut them. Um, but it still works perfectly fine. It's a hinge. Um instead of a solid piece and yeah so those washi tapes that we have in all of our jars <laughs> that's what they're good for um and then again you know we have a bunch of different pieces some that i like have um exact symmetry and i just love that kind of stuff um so again it's just creating the book it is time consuming but also rewarding at the same time now you may ask well have you put any pictures in any of the albums you've made and my answer is not yet um i had started one of them and then got sidetracked <laughs> so i really just enjoy making them i find it very satisfying to uh take a class, learn some new tricks of the trade and make them and then have them in my stash. So in case I do need a gift for someone, um, I have one, I can just pull from it. So that's really what I enjoy. And then this one's kind of cool where you open it up like this, but you have that little open button right there and then you fold it down and then you have a pocket also on the top. So you have many different elements going on on one page. And then again, you just have just the scenery, just creating the, the, the picture and the scenery. And then some can just be plain and that's okay. They don't all have to be extravagant. But um, this one here where it's a flip and a flap. And then you have the down. And then you go up. So if you did take this class, let me know. How long it took you no i'm just joking let me know if you enjoyed it if it was your first time or if you are a seasoned vibu crew member um and then this one here you just opened up and then here we have a tag so it's two different ones as you can see i forgot that so one is there and then this other one back here And then we have a few more pages. This one is one that has a pocket to the side. And then the last page. So as you can see, it is a lot to do, 
but it is a lot of fun as long as you know what you're getting yourself into i guess is the real real answer to your puzzling question so that is the album that we did in class now it comes sunday after you're a little bit rested <laughs> and ready ready to do more um is when we do the layout class now in the layout class um it's really most of them are really double page layouts but if you're not one that's a double page layout person and you like single page layout that's totally fine i've heard a lot of people just um restructure their pages or as you can see you probably just have them as standalone um so i will try to do them side by side so that way you can see how they are and hopefully this works um but it's pretty much just grabbing from both sides obviously this page is really upside down because it is the correct format of this page and um i mean you really are covering a little bit of the word so it doesn't really matter but then you're just incorporating all the different things and then making all of the colors go together so that was the first one and then this one i gotta make sure i'm going the right direction um, this is the next one so i had a lot of fun i really i saw that i wasn't supposed to take off the backing of these washi stickers but i was like whatever it doesn't matter it actually kind of looks really cute like that in the sense of seeing the imagery from the paper come forward so this is the next one and then this one i absolutely loved when we fussy cut out you will be doing some fussy cutting um all the butterflies from one of her page 12 by 12 pages and then assembled them in a wreath format so the, there is a wreath underneath which is the ba the main page and then we just basically use some of the foam dots to adhere them we put a centerpiece here we used her ampersigns or not ampersigns um parentheses um, to kind of like cluster what we're talking about because we're telling our story so you know if you have fur babies it could be your fur animals or one of your animals or children child doing one thing in three different poses or um, I don't know fun fun little things and then this side over here so really they could be standalone or they could go together they don't have to um, be a 12 by 12 double page layout so I really like that. Now with these, they are supposed to have photos in them. That's why I put the white mat so you wouldn't see the collection page. But as you can see, I didn't seal all four sides and that's so that I can allow myself to put a picture behind. So if you're doing pages like this and you don't have your pictures ready, I would strongly think about your access point as to getting a photo in there and then where that access point would be for you and only um, doing glue on maybe two sides or whatever you need, but not putting it on all four sides because then you wouldn't have access. So just something to think about when you're taking classes like this or creating 12 by 12 pages that um, you're not sure yet how you're going to um, photo them. So then these two are the next two 12 by 12 layouts. I don't know, maybe they go this way. I think they go this way I, I it could be the other way around but anyways um so this is kind of the same concept as well i kind of have these as matted so you don't see the background but i did leave some of them open so i can slide a photo in or if i didn't want to add a photo and i just wanted to put an embellishment or an icon in the center i could definitely do that as well so these were a lot of fun and then we did fussy cut well i didn't really fussy cut i don't even fussy cut out the big ones because i don't have a, a circle punch for them but if you do have her paper that has the circles on them they look like umbrella tops um you look to see what hole punches you have to figure out which ones work i want to say this is your one inch this is your one and a half and this might be your two inch I think the bigger one is three but um or two and a half inch maybe um i know there's a bigger one that's three inches but i don't have that one so i fussy cut those out and then um this is the last 12 by 12 um page that we did in class for sunday so again as you can see we kind of did some uh what do you call it um mixed media 
And so we used her stencils that she provided us in the kit and we basically just created more of a background. So these were or was a white cardstock sheet of paper and then we created the background with the stenciling of that and then we attached this portion as you can see it is on top of it um so you can kind of get an idea where you don't really have to just use the whole thing you can use another sheet on top of it and it kind of gives you a different scale and perspective these flowers we did fussy cut out um i didn't do that homework <laughs> before class so i just focused on the ones that she has on the paper and fussy cut those out um, but yeah, I really had a lot of fun doing this. So she does give you eight, she does give you the stamp set. She does give you the um, stencils she uses in the retreat. The only thing you have to supply is your own ink of choice. Now I did use the colors that she does use in her class, which was fossilized amber and mustard seed, which she loves yellow. So I went with it. But if you wanted to do a different color, you definitely could. Now we were, again, just like the album in class, weren't gonna get all of this done on camera with her. She basically just wanted to work with you as to the guts of all the mixed media so that you got all that down, grabbed your bits. Some of it she did with you on camera in putting a, a 12 by 12 together. Some of it she didn't, depending on how long she wanted her class to go because she does realize that it is a long process and sometimes it's just, too much for a person and she understands that but in order for her to conduct her class for anyone else watching it after the fact she does have to go through that process um so if you do see the videos with a long timestamp, please don't be discouraged it's just so that she makes sure she gets you gives you all the content you need um so i did have to work after hours to get all these done and then during those classes she does give us a sneak peek of a bonus class Yes, even though we did all these three days, and I'm telling you, it's probably, I don't know how many hours of instruction time. She does give us a sneak peek, and I am not one to be patient, because <laughs> those classes for the bonus class is on a different day. I actually just am one that I can look and kind of mimic um, what that's going to be about. So I went ahead and did the bonus classes. So if you're watching this, before the bonus class I'm sorry if you're watching this after the fact then I'm, I'm okay but I just wanted to give you forewarning about that um so this is one of the the double page layout in the bonus class that from what I could tell we did uh, or what she did um that I just mimicked because I wanted to kind of get my product put away and share with you all of the stuff before so this was that one and the second bonus 12 by 12 layout is this one and this is a lot of fun too. It looks pretty much basic, but she took some of the stamps in her stamp set and then also, um, you know, added some additional fun embellishments to it. So that is that. And then in case you're going to ask me, let's see what I had left over. So from all the stuff we had, um, you would have the uh puffy stickers these are all the frames left in the box here is the sticker book so still a ton of stickers left over to play with here is one of the um ephemera pieces so you can definitely see still a lot in there i believe this is the goodie pack here is some of the um paper clips that were in the thing obviously the stamp set that's not going to change and the stencil is not going to change papery there is still a lot in there um this thing is always packed i mean it has 200 pieces and you can definitely tell i did not use 200 pieces it's still chunky here is another ephemera pack that i have left over here is a 12 by 12 sticker sheet that i have all those stickers left over alphabets um, as you can tell, we didn't really use a lot, <laughs> so there's still a lot left over. The, um, the foam stickers, these we have available as well. Not many, but enough that if you wanted to do more clusters or some. Here is the puffy title stickers that we have left over. And then for the 6x8 paper pad, just a few pages. I would probably say, like, what, seven um, but we have those and then when it comes down to the paper, 
Um, what's on top is all of my um, barcode strips, my leftover fussy cutting, um, and then I'm going to just take one of the 12x12 12 12 sheets out to share with you all of the other 12x12 12 12 sheets. So again, just like the 6x8 paper pad, this is pretty much what I have left over. And, you know, whether you're going to use this to continue making more 12x12 12 12 papers, you definitely can just add it to your stash just to have left over to probably do some of the Friday Night Lives that she does um, with her products. So I really thought it was a really good investment. I did learn a lot. I made a lot of stuff. Excuse me. I made a lot of stuff and I had a lot of fun. So if you are interested, I know this collection retreat, even though it took place, is sold out. But she does have an option for access only on her website. And I will drop a link down below in case you're interested. So basically with access only, you'll be able to do everything I just shared with you, except you're not given the product. So the product would be in the product kit that was sold out, but you're able to curate your own stuff from the collection if you choose or use whatever you have on hand in regards to your own collection to basically make some of the same things that I just shared with you. Um, why would you want to do that versus everything I just shared with you? Because she does share you, with you how to create the things that I did, unless you're one like me that sees and just does, <laughs> then you're fine. But I basically like to share with you some of the stuff that I come across and then give you my personal opinion. Um, and it's strictly that my opinion um, on the class in case you are thinking about taking one and you're not sure what the end result is. So this kind of may help you figure that out. If you do have any questions, please let me know. I am not affiliated with Vicky Booten. I just love her stuff and I love her. She's an amazing person. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. And if you like the content, definitely hit that like button. And I will catch you on the next video. So you guys take care. Bye.